Gumbo is southern comfort food. It's a hearty, flavorful stew made with seafood, meat, and vegetables like okra and green pepper, often served with a scoop of white rice. Gumbo is thickened with a roux, which is a mixture of cooking fat and flour. It's also typically made with homemade stock, the Creole holy trinity of celery, bell pepper, and onion, as well as spices like paprika, cayenne, and something called filet, which is made from dried sassafras leaves. Often gumbo is very spicy, but since I'm not a big spice fan, I'm making a really mild version of gumbo. If you love spices, feel free to add cayenne pepper and increase the amount of spices I use. I found all the ingredients I'm using at Basil Bandwagon Natural Market. Now let's get cooking and you'll soon see why this popular soup is the official state cuisine of Louisiana. So I'm starting out by making my seafood gumbo stock. You'll need a large soup pot like this. You'll need one to two cups of shrimp shells and three cups of chopped vegetables. Here I have a combination of winter squash, some celery pieces, little carrot, onion. You can use whatever vegetables you like. Now add 10 cups of water. I'm adding two bay leaves. I'm going to add two cloves of garlic. I'm adding three sprigs of fresh thyme. While we're waiting for our stock to come to a boil, let's talk spices. Gumbo is all about the spices. My disclaimer is that I'm not a big spice person. Therefore, I'm making my gumbo mild, really mild. So for you gumbo fans out there who love spicy gumbo, you're gonna probably laugh at my assortment of seasonings here, but feel free to add more. If you are a spice fan, you can add as much spice as you like to your gumbo. You could just increase what I'm adding here. So what I have here is one teaspoon of sea salt, one half teaspoon of white pepper, one teaspoon of paprika, one half teaspoon of garlic powder, one half teaspoon of dried thyme, one teaspoon of onion powder, and one half teaspoon of dried oregano. As I said, if you want it spicy, you can increase the amount of paprika and add more pepper. Besides increasing the pepper and the paprika, you can also feel free to add cayenne pepper. That's gonna really add a spice factor. Now that the stock came to a boil, we're going to lower the heat to medium low and simmer it for 30 minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to fry my okra. So I'm heating up my pan over medium heat. Add two tablespoons of ghee. And we're adding two cups of okra. This is frozen and pre-cut. I'm gonna fry this for a few minutes and this helps to take away some of the natural sliminess that okra can have. Instead of the ghee, you could also use beef tallow or bacon fat. Now we're just gonna scoop out the cooked okra and put it on a plate that's lined with a paper towel. And just like that, no more slimy texture. It's been 30 minutes and we're shutting off the heat on our gumbo seafood stock. It's time to drain the seafood gumbo stock. Now it's time to make the roux. There's two different ways we could go about this. The low temperature, slow method, or the higher temperature, quicker method. So we're gonna heat up a pan over medium heat. The cooking fat I'm using is ghee. I'm a big fan of using healthy, saturated fats in our cooking because they're more heat stable. It's what our grandmothers or great-grandmothers used. 
I'm kind of old school when it comes to cooking fat. So you could either heat up the ghee over medium heat, add the flour, and cook it very slowly over 30 minutes while you're whisking and stirring. A lot of people might say, I don't have 30 minutes to stand at my stove and stir my roux. So if that's you, you can heat it up on a higher temperature, more like high heat, keeping a close eye on it, and once you see a few wisps of smoke just starting to smoke, then add your flour, whisk it, and it should cook in less time, more like five minutes as opposed to 30 minutes. So it's really up to you and how you wanna make your roux. This is gonna seem like a lot of fat, but I'm adding six tablespoons of ghee. Today I'm going with the low and slow method. So I'm heating this up over medium heat and adding my flour. Add one half cup of all-purpose flour. I'm reducing my heat to medium low and I'm gonna stir this constantly. Set your timer for 30 minutes and you're good to go. I like to think of this as cooking meditation. The whole point of this stirring is to prevent burning. You wanna get a nice warm cocoa color to the roux and that takes time. Okay, I confess I walked away for maybe a few minutes longer than I should have and I wasn't stirring and I almost burned this. So word to the wise, you gotta really keep an eye on it. Keep it moving and prevent it from burning. But see how that nice rich color is starting to develop? It's up to you how dark you want to get your roux. I'm going for more of like a brown cocoa color, so I'm going to call this done. Even after you remove the roux from the heat, you'll want to keep whisking it for a few minutes until it cools down because it could still burn. It's very delicate. Now let's thaw the shrimp. Check the thawing method on the package of shrimp. The quick method I'm using is where I'm placing the frozen shrimp in a colander and running cold water over it for six to seven minutes. Our shrimp is thoroughly thawed. I'm gonna pop this in the fridge while I top the vegetables. I've got one onion, two cloves of garlic, two celery stalks, and one green pepper. To take the stems off of five sprigs of fresh thyme. Now you can use whatever type of sausage you like if you prefer Cajun sausage or other varieties. I'm using this uncured beef kielbasa. I'm going to need one pound of sliced sausage so I'll use about a package and a half. So this is the gorgeous color of roux we ended up with and it's just the right color. Heat it up over medium heat. Now add the vegetables. 
We're gonna cook and stir for five minutes over medium heat or until the vegetables have softened. At this point, I'm also adding my mild Creole seasoning. I'm going to add two bay leaves and a couple cups of the stock. Keep stirring in the seafood stock just a little at a time. Now add the okra. The sausage. The fresh thyme. And I'm adding one tablespoon of coconut aminos. Typically Worcestershire sauce is used, but I'm using this as a non-soy ingredient. I'm adding one tablespoon. So bring the gumbo to a boil over medium high heat, skimming off any foam that appears. Now reduce the heat to low and simmer uncovered for one hour. You can see that after an hour of cooking, the gumbo has reduced and thickened up nicely. This really concentrates the flavors too. Now add the two pounds of shrimp. Cook the gumbo for another 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, you can taste the soup and see if you want to add additional salt and pepper. Personally, I find that the sausage releases a lot of salt into the dish, so I'm not gonna season mine with any additional salt or pepper. What I am going to add is some gumbo filet. It's basically just dried and powdered sassafras leaves, and it's a classic ingredient in gumbo. Add one to two teaspoons of the gumbo filet just before serving it. To make a perfect presentation, we're going to place two cups of the hot gumbo in a shallow bowl. Add one cup of rice right in the middle and garnish it with a little fresh parsley or scallions. I hope you enjoyed making gumbo. Let me know in the comments what your favorite soup is. If you like the video, feel free to share it, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe and hit the notification bell to find out about new videos as soon as they come out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. You'll need one to two cups of shrimp shells. Shrimp shells. She sells seashells? She sells shrimp shells?